8 billion degrees outside means e-bikes are scooters for me, and today it's scooters. Ride along with me and let's talk budget bikes, the internal combustion version. My scoot is a genuine scooter company Roughhouse R50. It's made in Taiwan by PGO. It's imported and branded genuine in the US market, and I'm told it's the last of the two strokes only sold in the US and Taiwan, and it's Taiwan that I want you to focus on for a minute. In the scooter world, there are top tier brands like Honda and Yamaha, and even higher, arguably, Vespa. And there are brands that directly compete with those right alongside them in dealer showrooms, usually at lower prices. Those are brands like Genuine, Sim, which is also called Lance in the US, Kimco, etc. Then you have the true budget scooter. Made in China, sometimes they might not even really have a brand. That's the very bottom tier. Along with those are similar but branded, at least with a recognizable brand scooter, brands like Ice Bear and Vitachi. In many ways, it's possible to compare scooters and bicycles by branding tiers. Let me give you some examples here. Vespa, Honda, and Yamaha, I just mentioned, those are considered top tier dealer brand scooters. Well, there's maybe Santa Cruz, Trek, and Specialized that would equate with that in the bicycle world. Move down just a little bit, still good quality, Genuine, Sim, and Kimco. Think giant. And that might actually be really relevant here because PGO that makes Genuine, Sim that makes Lance, they make other scooter brands sometimes, and I've heard that Giant does that with bikes, so very similar. Then we get down to the budget scooter tier, which would correlate roughly with our big box bikes, the $99 specials, Roadmaster, Magna, Huffy, and so on. And among those, you can find some bikes that have more appeal, like the Kent Truvail, the Schwinn Aluminum Comp, for example. And that's where I believe Vitachi, Bentelli, Ice Bear, Bikes like that, or scooters like that, reside. Three tiers on both sides, and they're similar, except when they aren't. Logic would dictate, the graphs being similar, that Ice Bear would be roughly on the same level with a Kent Truvail. Be as good of a purchase for someone looking to get into entry level via bicycling or scootering. They're at the same level. Someone could even argue that you might have to tweak each of them to do what you really need it to do reliably, but it can be done. Like the Truvel is a good basis for a project bike, an Ice Bear scooter should be equally as good of a platform for scooter riding. Let's entertain that for a moment. Some arguments for. Take this Ice Bear. It's a knockoff of the Yamaha BWS, known in the US as the Zuma. This is the previous generation Zuma slash BWS. Overseas, the BWS has a stacked headlight, rather than the bug eyes we got in America, and also one of my all-time favorite scooter looks. Here's the thing about scooters like this, and I'm not saying there isn't a case for one of these. I've had cheap Chinese scooters. I used to own a scooter dealership. I'm well-versed in this life, and what accommodations you have to make in your life to own one. And they do make many people happy. My claim is that they are not like the advantages, though, of big box bikes versus local bike shop. In that realm, we now have bikes that can make a clear and valid argument for being smart purchases versus an entry-level local bike shop bike. I mean, look at the Schwinn Axum or the Ozark Trail 29. Bikes that do have an argument might even be better than some of the entry-level local bike shop mountain bikes at a fraction of the cost. In the scooter world, as I've already said, it does not work like that. Again, I'm not knocking anyone that's happy with their budget Chinese scooter, and I'm not knocking a scooter just because it comes from China. Recently, there have been some quite impressive scoots rolling out of mainland China that are now nearly, if not equal to, some Taiwan scooters, which, if you don't know, Taiwan equals quality. You think Yamaha, you think Honda, you think Japan. Well, guess again, this Yamaha Zuma, it's made in Taiwan. And that goes all the way back to my 2009 Yamaha Vino. It was made in Taiwan. And the last I heard, that scooter is still on the road today. So again, I am not knocking Chinese scooters as a whole, nor anyone that enjoys their super budget Chinese scooter. No scooters that have the stigma for breaking down often. Heck, my very first scooter, the one that I bought for myself, very first scooter, was literally the cheapest Chinese scooter you could get. I paid $599 to my door. 
assembled it at the front door of the tech center I was working at at the time, wrote it off, and I rode that thing for over a year. And it was so cheap, it was called the Jet A-10 Warthog. No lie, that was the name. I looked and I couldn't find a pic, at least one that I had taken, and I even couldn't find any reference to it online, but it looked like the Asian equivalent to the Yamaha Jog. So, kinda like this, just imagine this solid black. Did I have to work on it? Oh yeah, lots. A hint was when I was buying it, they quote, recommended a parts pack. And by recommended, I mean it was already added to your cart and you had to opt out. And that pack included a carburetor, a CDI, a rectifier, a coil, and I think even a CVT belt. The belt, I get, that's a wearable item. But when you're buying a brand new motorized vehicle and they start off selling you key engine parts and electrical parts, that's kind of just the life of owning a cheap scooter. At least they're setting expectations. Did I enjoy it? Oh, absolutely. But I had no point of comparison. All the scooters I'd ridden for the years leading up to that were someone else's. If they broke down, I never saw it or had to worry with it. And they were Hondas and Yamahas, so probably very little work had to be done on them. Anyway, mine did break, and break a lot. The first week I owned it, friends came over and said, hey, let's go see a movie. So I parked it in my living room, because I didn't think about where I was going to park one when I purchased it. When we returned from the movie, and I still to this day can't believe my house didn't blow up, the carb had started leaking, and by leaking, I mean it emptied the entire over one gallon gas can onto my hardwood floors, which then soaked in. That was an unpleasant household repair to work through. I had to turn off the breaker box, open all the windows, and spend a few nights somewhere else. It was that bad. But I did then understand why that carb was included in the recommended parts kit. And that was just the start. Constant electrical battles, fried batteries, the wiring thin and brittle. We're talking only months before it started failing. Then the vacuum lines and the fuel lines, those two, poor quality, any amount of time out in the sun, they start cracking and leaking or causing other problems. If you're into tinkering and working on stuff, that A10 Warthog would have definitely been the scooter for you. And to this day, I still watch a lot of scooter videos on YouTube, of course, along with bikes. I try to keep up with it all, and based on what I see, I think today's budget Chinese scooters are still pretty much the same. I'm talking, of course, the bottom tier budget scooter, but also Ice Bear, Vitachi, and the like. Those scooters, to me, are just dressed up versions of the cheaper scooters. It's the same engine, same carb issues. By the way, on the engine, those GY6 engines that all these are based on, even on the cheapest scoot, they're usually pretty solid, at least the core engine. It's a robust and proven design. It's the stuff they bolt to it that creates the problem, but whatever the case, you have the GY6 engine, dress the base budget Chinese scooter up, add a few features, and I'll admit, looking at this Ice Bear, they do look compelling. And I wouldn't mind tinkering with one. I almost bought one a few months ago. And that's where the seeds for this video were sown, because I started looking at the scooters, at least at the price of the cheap budget Chinese scooters. I said my cheap Chinese scoot was $5.99 back when I bought it. That was, of course, a long time ago. But as recently as two years ago, you could still order one up, a small 50cc Chinese scoot online, and have it delivered to your house for $699. Want something that looks a little fancier or a few more cc's, like 150? You could get those for $799. Maybe $899. If you get really fancy, $999. The $999, probably right along the lines of this one a couple of years ago, and to me that's acceptable. My old $599 scooter, that A10 Warthog, even if I did have to spend an extra $100 or $200 over the course of a year, and yes, the breakdowns were annoying, but for the most part, I learned the bike and what it needed. I could pretty much tell you, whenever anything broke exactly what it was, $200 more than I paid for it was a pretty good deal considering the year of fun and the 100 miles per gallon I got out of it. So you can see, Chinese scooters, they can be great if they're super cheap, cheap enough to offset any quirks, and that gets us to today, to this bike. I'm convinced I could have purchased this for $899 or $999 two years ago. Now, the same scooter on sale for $1499. At that price, I actually have problems. 
Now we'll say, the $14.99 is from a dealership, this is a local dealer, that actually gives you a year warranty and services it. So in this particular case, it might be okay. It might actually be a good buy. I'm just using this particular one as a video example, because most people buy them from the internet. And I've been looking around the internet. I see the exact same bike for $16.99, $17.99, all the way up to $18.99. And some of the companies selling these, they might technically offer a three month warranty, but reading the reviews, questionable whether anyone gets parts so they usually have to end up buying the parts that they need so let's choose the middle ground price $17.99 you add 200 or more to that in parts for a year that's easily $2,000 there are a lot of Honda and Yamaha scooters used for 2k and those are gonna run like tops for probably another decade or two and you're not far off from the price of some of the genuine scooters some of the sim scooters and so on what I'm getting at is even though I like both bicycles and scooters, and you know I love value, when it comes to scooters, the internal combustion engine, that's more than just rolling a cheap bike off a rack, riding it around the neighborhood, and parking it in the garage till the next spring, which is what happens with most bikes, and then drug out for maybe that couple of weeks during perfect weather before it's lather, rinse, repeat. Comparing that to a scooter just doesn't really work even though the purchase tiers kind of match up. Just for basic riding, there's a lot going on with an engine and throttles and combustion and needing to do it all safely at faster speeds, sometimes 50, 60 miles per hour. I just can't see where these cheapest Chinese scooters are a good value, at least the way it is right now. It's not like it used to be. So if you're in the market for a scooter, making this video, to suggest maybe looking for brands like Genuine or Kimco or Lance, there's just too much to invest for too much to go wrong, especially when you're pressing up to that roughly $2,000 investment point. So while I am a huge big box bike fan, a budget bike fan, bicycles, and I do like budget scooters, my idea of budget scooters is more than $2,000. So be careful. If you're shopping for scooters, I know a lot of people are right now, budget scooters are not the same as budget bikes. Even if the tiers line up, it's very different, trust me. And that's my rant, what do you think? Are current prices pushing these cheap Chinese scooters out of the spot they once dominated? I'm curious to hear what you have to say and also let me know what you think about Taiwan quality versus Chinese mainland quality and if you have a GY6 scooter or other scooter, comment below as always. Thank you for watching Kev Central and have a great day.